Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by JJ Zacharyson from FanDuel to help us find out who we should buy and who we should sell. What's happening, JJ? Not too much, man. I'm glad that Mike Evans came through last week. That was good to see. Hopefully we have some, uh, some more good ones uh, moving forward. Absolutely. So let's start with Thursday Night Football. Let's start with the Green Bay Packers, who had Devontae Adams shut down by Chris Harris this past Sunday. Yet you're still buying the Packers' number one wide receiver. No fear after what we saw this past week? I think there's some fear. I think there's some concern because it is a new offense and, and whatnot. Uh, but at the same time, you face Chicago in week one. That's a tough matchup. Face Minnesota in week two. That's a tough matchup. And then you just noted he faced the Broncos and Chris Harris in week three. Another tough matchup. If you look at the peripherals, he still has 23.6% of the team's targets. He still has about 31% of the team's receiving yards. And he gets Philadelphia this week a team that's given up four top 15 performances and three top 10 performances to start the year to wide receivers. So I think he's in a good spot. I think this is a bounce back spot. Uh, so right now is the time to buy. With as weak as that Philly secondary is, Devontae Adams should be in a good spot, as should Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who finally showed up this past week against Denver. Green Bay, Thursday Night Football against Philly. You're also buying the old veteran Devontae Freeman, who finally really had a good game this past Sunday. Wasn't able to get in the end zone, but Freeman looked good with Edo Smith out with a concussion. Freeman should get all the work that he can handle. Yeah, and you know what? Through the, these three games, he's seen 76% of Atlanta's uh, running back touches. He has about a 10% target share, so the volume side is there. You know, we're not seeing the 2015 version of Devontae Freeman by any means, but he's still seeing volume. And in weeks one and two, they faced Minnesota and Philadelphia, two really tough rush defenses. Like you said, he looked good in week three. So I think right now, given the fact that he hasn't found the end zone, that's why he's a buy candidate. People may not realize just how good he has looked. Like you said, it's not the same guy from four years ago, but he, he's moving all right. He does seem to be healthy. And without Edo Smith, touches are going to continue to be there. The numbers are down because of no touchdowns. That's going to change soon. Devontae Freeman, clearly someone you should buy. Up next, we move to Baltimore, where Hollywood Brown hasn't been as good as his week one breakout, but you're still believing in him. Why is that? I am. So Hollywood Brown coming off a two catch 49 yard uh, performance against Kansas City definitely underperformed there, but he still has 26% of the team's targets, 31% of the team's receiving yards and only Keenan Allen and Mike Evans have more air yards than Marquise Brown does. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Lamar Jackson is throwing it deep at the highest rate in the NFL. Hollywood Brown is a big play waiting to happen. If you didn't draft him, if you weren't buying him as a late round flyer, now's the time to buy him after this down performance against Kansas City. The offense is still moving, and Marquise Brown still seems to be one of Lamar Jackson's two favorite targets. We know what that upside is. Maybe take this opportunity to buy him a little bit lower than you could have just a couple of weeks back. We did the good, now let's get to the bad. We did all the buying, now let's sell. And we begin our selling with Derrick Henry, who seemed all right, I thought, against Jacksonville. He's found the end zone every game. Why are you selling him? Yeah, you know, that's the main reason why you sell him right now is because he has found the end zone every game. And this is in a Tennessee offense that really isn't that good. Now, Derrick Henry always has the risk of not playing as many snaps as his counterpart, Deion Lewis, if there's a negative game script. That's exactly what happened against Jacksonville in week three. Deion Lewis actually out snapped Derrick Henry. So far this season, Derrick Henry has scored a rushing touchdown on every 70 rushing yards over the last five years. Uh, running backs have scored a rushing touchdown on, on about every 145 rushing yards. Um, and, and obviously yards do correlate to touchdowns because more yards leads to more touchdowns. So uh, Derrick Henry, just from the, from the standpoint of touchdown regression, that's the main reason why he's a sell right now. And it makes sense. You need more touches and more yards to theoretically have more touchdowns. Obviously has bucked that trend thus far. Can it continue all season long? I don't know. But Derrick Henry, according to JJ, is someone you should sell right now. Just like using the big game from this past weekend to sell Adam Thielen. We've talked about the Vikings before. Diggs and Thielen just don't run enough routes in order to be productive. This is a team that wants to run the football as much as humanly possible. Adam Thielen, well, he made the most of his small opportunities last week. But counting on him to do it week in and week out, it's a scary proposition. Yeah, I think that we're going to see inconsistency from both of those wide receivers throughout the year. That's something that we talked about earlier this season. Uh, Adam Thielen has 173 yards receiving so far, but he has two scores. So that's just a reason to sell because that's that's overproduction in the touchdown column. He had a fluky rushing touchdown last week. 
Um, and Minnesota, like you said, they've been the most run heavy team in football to start the year. Some of that has to do with game script, but upcoming, they get teams like Chicago, the Giants, they get Washington, they get these teams that they can see positive game scripts against, or they could be lower scoring games. So I think that's a reason to sell Adam Thielen after the, that two touchdown performance that he had on Sunday. I'm just waiting for Stephon Diggs to do the same thing so I could sell him, but Right now, I want nothing to do with this Vikings offense unless his name is Dalvin Cook. Adam Thielen with a fluky touchdown and, and a real one, not something you can count on week in and week out. I'm certainly selling Thielen if I can. As we talk about, I don't want to say fluky touchdowns, but just touchdown reliability, that brings us to Aaron Jones, who split time evenly with Jamal Williams, but did have two one-yard plunges to get him in the end zone twice and to save his fantasy day. But through the first couple of weeks, outside of one 27-touch game, it's been a little bit nerve-wracking to own Aaron Jones. Where do you fall on him? Yeah, exactly. You know, Matt LaFleur entering last week, he said he wanted to even out the touches between Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. And that's exactly what happened. Through the first two weeks, Aaron Jones had about a 58% snap share in that backfield. On Sunday, it was 39%. Jamal Williams was getting more run than Aaron Jones was. The fact that Aaron Jones found the end zone a couple of times, it's just an easy time to sell Jones, despite the fact that I think that he's the superior talent between those two running backs. The fantasy community has been saying this for years. Aaron Jones is so much more talented. Maybe they should give him the ball more. But every coach, whether it's Mike McCarthy or Matt LaFleur, they don't necessarily seem to agree. I don't know why, but all we can do is just take Coach LaFleur at face value. He wants to split these touches evenly, and thus far, he mostly has. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. JJ, good luck this week, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Tomorrow, Jim Sonnens will join me as we look toward week four from a DFS perspective. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.